Miami Dolphins continue to build around Tua Tungavailoa by hiring a QB coach. Deshaun Watson officially announced teams he would like to trade. NFL's latest offseason memo is a win for the Dolphins. Larry King, former Miami Dolphins broadcast personality, passed away. Miami Dolphins coach many linebackers at Senior Bowl. It's chance to take a look. Please subscribe and ring the bell before we deep dive. The Miami Dolphins continued their offseason pursuit to build around quarterback Tua Tungavailoa as they hired Central Michigan offensive coordinator Charlie Fry as their new QB coach Saturday, Cameron Wolf of ESPN reported. Fry was a key assistant working with Tungavailoa during the Elite 11 high school QB camp that helped the young QB burst onto the national scene. In a nod to how valuable the experience was to him, Tungavailoa later hired Elite 11 head coach Trent Dilfer as his personal coach during his NFL draft process. Fry will replace quarterbacks coach Robbie Brown, who is out despite having time left on his contract. Brown becomes the third known offensive assistant to leave, joining Chan Gailey, who resigned as offensive coordinator earlier this month, and offensive line coach Steve Marshall, who also is out despite having time left on his contract. Brown and Marshall had both been hired by the Dolphins after Gailey had vouched for them. Tight end coach George Godsey took over quarterback coach responsibilities in the second half of the season, an early sign that the Dolphins were ready to make a change at the position. Miami continues to build around Tungavailoa, who is coming off an uneven rookie season but has received strong public support from coach Brian Flores and general manager Chris Greer in recent weeks amid speculation and criticism. The Fry move is another example of the team trying to put Tungavailoa in a comfortable situation entering year two. Fry, 30, Fry, 39, spent five years as a NFL quarterback, mostly notably with the Cleveland Browns. He's spent the past two seasons as Central Michigan's offensive coordinator and QB coach. The Dolphins, who are coaching the Senior Bowl this week, have yet to officially name an offensive coordinator and may not make a hire until after they return from Mobile, Alabama. Deshaun Watson said, Miami Dolphins isn't number one in his wish list which he want to trade to. Every NFL team who could be in need of a new quarterback has their eyes on the situation in Houston this offseason after it has been reported that Deshaun Watson could be looking for a change of scenery. The Pro Bowl signal caller had to watch as his top wideout was traded away and reportedly did not have any say with the recent movement in the Houston Texans' front office, including the ongoing coaching search. Some view this situation between the Texans and Watson as unsalvageable and that the quarterback will force his way out sooner rather than later. Where exactly would Watson want to play in 2021? A recent report revealed Watson's pecking order and his top two destinations are actually in the AFC East. According to CBS, Watson prefers to play for the New York Jets, and his number two option would be the Miami Dolphins. CBS reports that Watson told people the Jets are his top preference because they recently hired Robert Sala to be their new head coach. Watson apparently valued Sala so much that he wanted the Texans to interview him for their open head coaching job. The former San Francisco 49ers defensive coordinator established himself as one of the league's best over the past few years, and his defense even helped carry the 49ers to Super Bowl 54 last year. Sala was beloved by his players, and his charisma has the Jets thinking he is capable of quickly and efficiently establishing a new culture built on success. NFL's latest offseason memo is a win for the Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins have quite a bit riding on the 2021 NFL offseason. As a franchise, Miami has pushed their assets into a more forward-thinking view, so much so that the team is going to be selecting another four players in the top 50 of this year's NFL draft just one season after drafting five in the top 60 of the 2020 NFL draft this past offseason. That kind of talent infusion is a first-class ticket to a better roster, even if all of the picks made don't end up being slam-dunk, home-run selections. But with so much of the Dolphins' offseason riding on the NFL draft process, Miami has to be wary of an offseason draft cycle that will be unlike any other in league history, even in comparison to 2020. Because the NFL has provided all teams with a new memo regarding guidelines for getting to know the 2021 NFL draft's eligible talents amid the ongoing 19 pandemic. And it is restrictive, to say the least. This is a huge shift. 
At least in 2020, the regular draft cycle was off to somewhat of a routine start through the beginning of March. So, to summarize, no timing, testing or medical examinations outside of pro days and all-star games. No private visits, no in-person interviews. NFL teams are now effectively going to be flying blind and finishing their evaluations of players courtesy of spreadsheets and speed dating style Zoom calls. That's a tough pill to swallow. But the Miami Dolphins do have a leg up, it comes next week in Mobile, Alabama. Remember, the Dolphins coaching staff will be working hand in hand over the course of three days with some of the brightest senior draft prospects in all the country before attempting to lead the Senior Bowls national team to a win a week from today. The changes to the draft process are a tough pill to swallow for all 32 NFL teams. But the Dolphins, as if they didn't before, now undoubtedly have a leg up for their coaching access to three days of practices with a significant amount of the 2021 class next week in Mobile. Larry King, former Miami Dolphins broadcast personality, passed away. Larry King is not known for his short stint as a Miami Dolphins color commentator but that is exactly what he did early in his broadcast career. King passed away Friday night at the age of 87. The prominent radio show host really got his breaks in the early 1970s in Miami with WIOD television. In 1970 and much of 1971, he served as the Dolphins' color commentator but was replaced mid-season after legal issues cost him his job with the station. Those charges were later dropped and his career resumed but he didn't return to the booth to cover Dolphins' games. Of course, we all remember King for his talk show and up-close and personal interviews what we don't know is that he actually those skills at a restaurant in Miami all those years ago when he would literally interview anyone who walked through the doors. The Dolphins would go on to make their first appearance in a Super Bowl following the 1971 season. They would lose to the Dallas Cowboys 24-3 but the following season would stand as their greatest moment in NFL history. In 1977, he would return for one more season. Another interesting anecdote is his name. Larry King was Larry Ziegler but his boss at the station thought he should change it because it was too hard to remember. He picked up the Miami Herald and just before he went on air, changed his last name to King after seeing an advertisement for King's liquor store in the paper.